Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is Catherine if you're new here and today's video is all about strewing. What is strewing? That's exactly what I wanted to know and I'm here to share with you today everything I have learned about strewing including what it is, what it isn't, what to expect from strewing, as well as at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a link to all of my favorite resources for strewing ideas, as well as a downloadable mastermind mind map worksheet so that you can work on creating your best strewing ideas for your child, coming up next. Before I talk to you about what strewing is, I'd like to talk about what it isn't. Strewing is not about trying to get your child to do something, trying to get them to learn. It's not about trying to get them interested in something that you felt um, you wished you had learned when you were a kid. For this reason, when you are picking things to strew for your children, it's important to ask yourself two simple questions. Why am I strewing this and what is my motive? What are my expectations from this? That way you're not strewing things with the wrong intentions. Strewing is not about filling in educational gaps. So what is strewing? Strewing was a term coined by a woman named Sandra Dodd and it basically just means by her definition to strew materials uh, of interest around the house so that your children can discover them. I've always been in favor of child-led learning, child-led therapies, but at the same time I also have to realize that children only know what they know and they don't know what they don't know. So strewing to me makes a lot of sense. I think of strewing as planting seeds. It's creating an environment that's rich in opportunities for them to find and discover and learn things not only about the world around them but also about themselves. It's a way for them to find new passions. The other awesome things about strewing is that if you have a child with anxiety, whether they're on the autism spectrum or they just have anxiety in general about new things, this is a great way to introduce something new without any pressure, without creating more anxiety. And that's something else that I want to talk about next and that's what can you expect from strewing? Do you come to the playground with expectations from your children? Well, I mean, maybe you have some general expectations like be nice to other kids, don't push anybody down, things like that. But in general, you don't come with an agenda, right? You don't come with them, you don't come with any ideas about what they're supposed to learn while they're here? Probably not, because you probably don't even think of the playground as being a place for learning, but guess what? They're learning a lot of things while they're at the playground. But that's another video. When you think about strewing, Think about your home as a playground, a playground of learning. You're going to place things all around that may catch their interest, but there are no expectations. So this brings us to our next topic, which is what to strew, how to strew. Um, where do I get ideas for strewing? Well, there are three different ways to strew or three different types of things you can strew. You can strew virtual things, like things on the computer, things um, that would go on their iPad, like apps. You can also strew experiential things, so giving suggestions of places that you think they might be interested in going and visiting, things that you, you know, activities that you think they might be interested in the both of you doing together, which is also a great opportunity for you to, to connect. And then of course there are physical forms of strewing like books and um, sensory items, um, all relating to things that they're already interested in. So a little bit more about what to strew. You want to pick things that are an extension of something they're already interested in. The point is not, like I said before, to fill in educational gaps or to fulfill childhood dreams that you didn't fulfill, 
things that you think that they should be interested in. It's simply about taking the things that they're already passionate about and expanding on those. I'm going to put a link in the description below where you can get a um, PDF that will list a lot of my favorite resources for strewing as well as that mastermind mind map that you can fill out to help you kind of visually see and figure out what things you think your child would be interested in. There's also going to be an example in there that I have filled out myself of things that I have not done with my daughter yet and in the near future I'm going to send you a companion video of us doing those things. Now you'll only get that video and you only get the PDF if you click the link below. So I hope I've answered all your questions today or at least got you started into the world of strewing. And another thing I want to say is strewing does not have to be limited to homeschoolers. You can strew for your kids if they're in school. Um, a lot of times kids that are on the spectrum or kids that have a lot of anxiety or emotional dysregulation can sometimes be very overwhelmed by the time by the time they get done with a week of school and they may or may not want to do a bunch of stuff but that doesn't mean you can't give them the opportunity to find new things that's the beauty of strewing is it's not pushy so they might even be able to use that that those strews to find a release for some of that tension that they have throughout their school week. Lastly, I want to thank you for joining me today and watching this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to see more, click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications so that you're notified when I upload videos. And I will see you next time. Bye.